JU daerah Gombak yang julung, julung kalinya diadakan. Jadi uh, untuk membekati majlis. Oh ya. Sorry. Before we start the session, uh, I would like to invite uh, Tuan Zainal from our Timbalan PPD Gomba to say a few words uh, on our on our session today morning. Uh, okay. Alright, thank you Mr. Nagarajan. Okay, bye. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, salam sejahtera and a very good morning. Uh, terima kasih kepada uh, our master ceremony, Puan Frida Jihan Abdul Kadir, uh, Mr. Nagarajan, Karupanan, uh, uh, Kes, uh, Puan Azami, SIC Plus Bahasa, Puan Syahnas Mehtab, uh, SIC Plus Bahasa PPD Gombak dan Puan Nurul Huda, SIC Plus Bahasa. Baik, insya Allah pada pagi ini uh, kita akan laksanakan uh, bengkel Bahasa Inggeris. Bahasa Inggeris. Jadi kita ada pencerama Puan Nur Aini Muhammad Syed eh, selaku JU yang akan berkongsi uh, sesi bengkel pada, pada, pada pagi ini. Jadi terlebih dahulu saya menyampaikan uh, salam takzim daripada Tuan KPPD kita Tuan Haji Sajuri bin Masdur Beliau hari ini uh, cuti sakit kerana uh, dia telah all out for perayaan Hari Guru yesterday uh, Kita telah mencatat sebanyak 6,113 penyertaan Jadi pada pagi ini Beliau menyampaikan salam pada semua, minta maaf dengan ucapan ucapan uh, selamat hari guru kepada semua guru di daerah Gombak, di negeri Selangor dan di Malaysia dan juga beliau mengucapkan ucapan terima kasih cikgu. Thanks teacher. Happy Teachers Day to all of you. Jadi untuk pada pagi ini, saya dipahamkan bahawa kita ada guru-guru bahasa Inggeris uh, dari daerah Gombak dan juga Guru-guru dari luar daerah Gombak uh, Welcome to join us So kita alu-alukan Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan for share, Sharing session this morning I hope our sharing session uh, Today Akan datangkan uh, Man sedang melaksanakan Google Meet Saya perlu hadir sana. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan Saya ucapkan terima kasih banyak-banyak Thanks. Happy Teachers Day Tiku uh, Sekian. Terima kasih Okay. And camera because it will interrupt uh, our workshop today uh, and please respect the speaker of the day by not uh, joining and clicking the present now button and if you have any questions regarding the workshop you can leave your questions in the chat box and we will address it at the end of the session all right okay so behind the uh, besides the housekeeping just now, I would like to uh, uh, introduce our speaker of the day, uh, Puan Noraini Binti Mat Said. Right? A little bit about her. Okay, so uh, Cikgu Noraini is, uh, has been teaching for 17 years now and she is also the respected Guru Chimalang of our district and um, she is actively involved in giving up talks and uh, sharing her knowledge since 2009 She's also one of the panel for the GEM module that we have been using in Gomba. And she's a writer for UPSR supplementary uh, books with expertise, especially in setting up UPSR formatted questions. 
So uh, a very noted speaker we have with us here today. And we are very lucky because she hails from Gomba district. All right. So uh, to pass on uh, the session, Kain, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready here. I will pass the session to you now, Kain. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you, Frida. Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very pleasant morning to our special guest, Zainal Ismail, Puan Shanas, Puan Hazami, Puan Ruhuda, and my JUD Gomba teachers. Okay, last but not least to all my fellow friends here. So today I'm going to share with you some of the tips, uh, mostly on section B and some on the section C. All right. So let's start. So we are going to touch on the formatted writing and also the story writing. So the first formatted writing that I'm going to touch <clears throat> is on speech. It has a formal letter. Then we, uh, I'm going. I'm going to touch also on the formal letter. And the last one is on the book review. As we all know that these all four formatted writing haven't come out in the UPSR yet, but yet it's still in our syllabus, okay? Then uh, about the story writing, I'm going to touch a little bit on using linkers, okay? Because uh, uh, I guess you have enough information on the story writing from the previous uh, session that we have with the PPD, uh, sorry, for the, with the JPN. So I'm just going to touch on using linkers. And also the I'm going to share the, pre, the pre past method that I have been using in my classroom. Okay. Okay. So the first section B is about the speech. So of course, when we teach our peoples, we need to explain to them, okay? Because uh, in reality, is the importance of them learning new format. Okay? So of course, in, in the classroom, uh, we have to brief them on the importance of writing certain format so that they're, they're going to use that knowledge in the real life, okay? So the first purpose of writing the speech or giving speech is to inform the audience about an important topic. And we also use the speech to persuade the public to do something. For instance, we want to uh, persuade the public to, uh, uh, to practice healthy lifestyle, Okay, then we also use speech to instruct and also to entertain the audience. Okay, so let's look at our question handout for today. So this is the question given for our speech. Okay, this, this is the notes on benefits of taking public transport to work and school. Okay, here it mentioned about the benefits. And also we do have the tips on how to stay safe when traveling by public transport. Okay. So the question given here, okay, you are presenting a speech during a school assembly on the topic, how to travel safely by public transport. Okay, in your speech, talk about at least three ways on how people can be safe when traveling. So normally in my classroom, I used to teach my peoples right after they read the instructions, there are two things that need to be done. 
Okay. The first thing, I request them. It's not a request, but it, it is an instruction. Okay. So I ask them to circle the format. So of course, they are going to circle the word speech here. Okay, so the word speech here to remind themselves that they are writing a speech because we know that during exam, people might be a bit nervous so they can be um, mm -hmm. uh, wrong in answering the question. Okay, then the second thing that they have to do is underline the reason or the topic, the important topic mentioned in the question. So in this case, in this speech, so the important thing that they have to bear in mind is the topic on how to travel safely by public transport. So these two things look simple. It may look simple to you, but actually it plays an, a very important role for the students to write their answer correctly. Okay. So let us look at how we are going to solve this question okay so actually i have come up with a formula on how to answer the speech correctly uh, so the formula is sit three hours tired Okay, sit, S-I-T, sit, three hours, tired. So what does it mean? <clears throat> okay, so the first S stands for salutation. Okay, for example, good morning to teachers and friends. Okay, so that is a normal salutation that the people will use in the school assembly. Okay, then right after the salutation, you will have I. So the I stands for introduce yourself then the t means the title of so uh, they will write the title of their speech okay then the let the number three means three points plus two supporting details okay for your information guys uh i used to teach my kids in the class uh, please bear in mind that when you are answering formatted writing, please do apply the 3 plus 2 formula. Okay, the 3 means the points, uh, which is the content that we take straight away from the question. Then the 2 means supporting details, which is not included in the question, but we, uh, we, we give it to support the the content that we have taken from the question. Then the hours, actually the letter H stands for hope. So towards the end of the speech, they will have the hope. And lastly, the word tired, letter T means thank you. So they will end their, spe their speech with thank you. Okay, so according to this question, Okay, let's look at how we are going to answer it. So the first one, we are going to have the, the S. Remember, sit three hours tired. So the S is salutation. So I'm going to start with good morning, teachers, and friends. So since the question uh, mentioned that uh, the situation is in the uh, school assembly, so definitely the audience will be teachers and friends. And we have to remind our pupils that it's not necessary that the audience will be teachers and friends. So they really have to look carefully to the question, who are their targeted audience? Okay. Then we have I, S, I, T, right? So I is the introduction of self. So example, I am... Nazmi bin Zainal. So that is my introduction. Then I will continue with the T, which is the title. Okay. The title of my speech is How to Travel 
safely by public transport. Okay, so I am done with my first paragraph, which I include the S, I, and T. Okay, let's go to second paragraph, which is the three plus two. Three information from the question plus two supporting details. So my first content, when you are traveling, wait for it to stop completely to avoid getting hurt. So if you look at the question again, okay, look at the question again. Actually, I am taking this point. Wait for bus to stop completely. So this is the point that I am putting in my second paragraph now. Okay? All right. Then continue with the supporting details. Okay, I have put here. Okay, if you notice that the phrase to avoid getting hurt is written, is purposely written in the read because I want to put a remark there that those are the supporting details. Okay, so right now I'm having one plus one. One information plus one supporting details. Okay, now you should not push pregnant ladies, old people, and the disabled. So this is my second point that I am actually taking again from the question. So let's look at the question again. Okay, so I'm taking this one, this point. Do not push, give way to pregnant ladies, old people, and the disabled. So please don't forget to remind your kids that if, let's say, the information given in the question is not in a complete make it into a complete sentence. Because some students, they might think, oh, I can just straight away take the points from the question. So they will just straight away copy the, the phrases, although it is not in the form of complete sentence. Okay? So now, we are going to continue how to answer. Okay, let's look at the answer again. Okay, so now my next point. Okay, if you are taking a taxi, inform your parents the taxi number plate or other details. So this is also another information given in the question. So right now I have got three information from the question plus one supporting details. So I'm going to add my next supporting details, which is so they can locate you in case of emergencies. Okay. So now, actually, I have completed the three plus two formula. Okay. So the three plus two is going to be in the second paragraph. Means uh, the second paragraph uh, is the our main uh, highlight in the answer okay so my last paragraph remember again the formula okay s i t c three hours tired so the hours are uh, sorry uh yeah the hours h is hope so i hope okay you can follow the tips okay you can follow the tips then tired is the thank you Okay, so with that, we already complete, completed the 
the speech. Okay? According to the seed, three hours tired. So actually, I have formulated the formula according to the sequence of how the points going to be look like in your speech. Okay? It is according to the correct sequence. All right, so we're going to, to, to go to our second formatted writing, which is the informal letter. Okay, so let's refer to our question handout again. So the question for the informal letter, okay, this is about the poster about Love Our Environment Week, okay? So there are tips, okay, about how to care for the environment and also the activities held during the event, okay? For example, poster making, we do have the poster making, then coloring contest, we have games and quizzes, we have storytelling competition, and also making recycled paper demonstration. Okay, so let's look at what is the question all about. Okay, your school is organizing the Love Our Environment program. Okay, write a letter to your friend inviting him or her to join you. Okay, write about what you like of the program. Include at least two activities that you can take part with your friend. Okay, so again, remind our kids to circle the format because don't be surprised. The question is asking to write a letter. Instead, they will write a, a message, for example. So that's why for precaution, we have to instruct them, make it compulsory for them okay, to put some remarks. For example, circle the word letter. Okay? And also, uh, we'll ask them to underline the, the reason. Inviting. So the main purpose of this is to invite his or her friend. Okay. All right. So let's look at how we are going to tackle this question. Again, I'm using a formula. Okay. All right, so before that, I forgot to, to explain that. Okay, informal letter. Okay, we used to explain to people at the beginning of the class what are the purpose of them uh, learning uh, some specific topic, okay, that they can apply in their, their daily life or in their real life, okay? So informal letter is meant for family, for friends, and also relatives, okay? So this is the, the format uh, or the formula okay, that I have come up to memorize how to write a letter. So my formula here on how to memorize the, the informal letter, okay, it is based on the formula at onion ring three pollen cooking recipe. Okay, I think it's quite easy to remember. At onion ring three pollen cooking recipe. So the address. So of course, the informal letter, they will have the address on uh, in the uh, at the first thing. Okay, then we will have the the D. Okay, the first D is uh, it is date. Okay, then followed with the second D, which is dear. Okay, the opening. Okay, then we will have onion. Okay, onion. The letter O stands for the opening sentence, okay? Uh, opening sentence, for example, how are you or whatever. Okay, then we will have the ring, the R, which is the reason of writing. Okay, 
Okay, then I used to teach my peoples to have this opening uh, opening sentence and also the reason of writing on their first paragraph. Okay, then paragraph two, okay, the onion ring three, right? So the three stands for uh for three plus two, okay, which is three information from the question plus two supporting details, okay. Then which is paragraph three, Holland, the H, it stands for hope. Okay, they will have hope there. Then cooking, the C stands for closure. Okay, the closure. Then the recipe, RE, stands for regards. So I think it's quite easy for them to, to memorize. Add onion ring, three, Holland cooking recipe. So that is the formula to memorize the informal letter, okay? Uh, and if you notice that this formula, um, according to the sequence again, so easier for them to know what's next and what's next, okay? So let's look at the, how we're going to tackle this question. Okay, so the first one, remember, add A, okay? We have the, the, the A, the first A is the address, okay, the address of the sender. Then we have the D, okay, the D is the, is the date. Okay, for example, today's date is 20th, May 2020. Then the next D is the Dear Aslan, for example. We add, A-D-D, -D, add, okay. Then our first paragraph will consist of okay, the formula is onion, so the letter O stands for opening sentence. For example, thanks for your letter. Okay, then we have ring, onion ring, right? So, oh, sorry, uh, this is uh, for your information. My school is organizing the love our environment program so this is still considered as my opening sentence and if you notice that actually this sentence uh i derive from the instruction itself so i'm uh, i'm taking the instruction uh, the the sentence from the instruction uh, yeah, yeah in instruction okay so now i'm going to have the ring okay onion ring so ring r stands for the reason of writing why am i writing this letter okay the reason is therefore i would like to invite you to join it okay therefore i would like to invite you to join it so that is the reason and actually the reason i have underlined in the uh, instruction earlier okay so this is my first paragraph so so far i've already got add onion ring so now my second paragraph, I have the three, three plus two. Okay, so my first information, it is going to be held on 20th July from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the school hall. So this information is also given in the question just now. Okay, then there will be many interesting activities there also given in the question since you love art okay if you see that the the phrase since you love art is written in red color because i want to highlight that this is the supporting details it's not given in the question but i am giving it to support my my idea okay since you love art you can join either poster making competition or coloring contest okay so if you still remember the poster making and also coloring contest are the two activities mentioned in the poster just now okay Next, I'm going to have, I think, it's going to be fun. 
So I think it's going to be fun is also another example of my supporting details. Okay, then if both of us would join the games and quizzes there. So instead of giving two examples of activities, because just now the, the instruction say at least two activities, so actually I have given so far four activities. Okay. All right, if you uh, if you look at my example, so this is what I meant by the three plus two. So the first information is about the date and the venue. The second information is about the activities, and the third, uh, sorry, the uh, the second and third are all about the activities. Okay, and plus the two supporting details. All right. So remember the formula just now. Add Three, uh, add onion ring three. Okay, then we will have Holland. What does Holland H stands for? Is a hope. Holland is hope. So I hope you will join me. Then the buy is the cooking. C closure. So my closure is quite short. Just put it by. Okay, then I remember the formula again. Add onion ring three Holland cooking recipe. So recipe the R E is the regards. Okay. For example, regards. So I think if you use this formula uh, for your peoples, I think it's easier for them to remember what are needed in their informal letter. Okay. Because of uh, I do believe that with formula, it's easier for people to memorize something, okay? All right, so let's look at the third formatted writing, which is the formal letter. So again, we remind our peoples, what is the purpose of writing the formal letter? So the first purpose is the for official purpose, of course. Okay, for example, to school or to office. Uh, and also, you can give example to bank. For example, they want to apply something, open an account or apply for cards maybe. Okay. Then let's look at the question and out. What is the question for this formal letter? So the question here, okay, I think some of you are quite familiar with this question. Actually, this is our last year trial question, right, for Selangor. Okay, this, so this is the Interclass Games 2019. Okay, I, uh, I took it from the last year, past year question, uh, past trial question. Okay, there are four activities mentioned here about softball, netball, volleyball, and hockey. Okay, by the way, can you see my screen or not? Guys, anyone can answer? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Then we have uh, mentioned here about the date, the venue, okay, the coach, everything. Okay, let's look at the question. Okay. You are the class monitor. So the role of the people is as a class monitor. You write a formal letter to the core curricular senior assistant to seek permission to use the sport facilities for the interclass games. All right. So as usual, remind our kids to circle the the the, letter, the format. Okay. So they are going to circle the word formal letter and. The reason of writing, okay? So the reason of writing is to seek permission to use the spot facilities for the interclass games, right? Okay, so now let us look at how we are going to answer the questions. Okay, guys, please remember for informal letter writing, 
remember your right hand side because the address, the date, and the regards all are going to be on the right. Then the informal letter on the left hand, except for the date. Okay. So as usual, we will have the address of sender, address of receiver, then we will have date, dear sir or madam, the title, then three paragraphs as usual. First paragraph, include name and position, reason of writing, then paragraph two, details, okay, then paragraph three is the hope and also the closure, then yours faithfully, okay, name and position okay uh, i'm pretty sure that uh, most people are very scared okay to write the formal letter because to them formal letter is more complicated compared to the uh, informal letter but i keep telling them don't worry because uh, in informal letter we do have the supporting details which means they have to add their own idea uh, on the other hand the formal letter, we don't have to put any supporting details because all the details are given in the question because formal letter is more to straightforward writing. And again, I have come up with a formula okay, to remember. Okay, uh, The formula is to A to the tip during Hari Raya this year. So since Hari Raya is around the corner, uh, so easier for them to remember, okay? So 2A to the tip during Hari Raya this year. Okay, what is it? What is the 2A stands for? So the first A is the address of sender. The next A is the address of the receiver. Then the 2D. The first D is the date. Okay, the date will be on the same line of the last address of receiver. Then the next D is the dear, okay, dear sir or madam, okay. Then T I P, okay, the T stands for title, the title of the letter. Then we will have the I introduce yourself. Then next is the P, which is the purpose of writing. Why are they writing this formal letter? Okay, if according to the question just now, they are writing the letter because they want to seek for permission, right? Okay, then during, the word during, so the letter D stands for details. So they have to focus the second paragraph on the details. Okay, what are the important details that need to be considered when we are writing this letter? If, for example, when they are seeking the permission, uh, to use the spot facilities, of course, the person in charge need to know the date, the time, okay? Uh, then the reason why they are using the, the facilities, okay? Then the last paragraph will be the Hari Raya. So the letter H stands for hope. Okay, then this THIS, the letter T stands for thank, meaning thank you. Then why year is yours faithfully? So remember, the formula to write a formal letter is to A to the tip during Hari Raya this year. Okay? If just now the informal letter is something to do with the Holland Holland recipe, so now it's about the during Hari Raya. Okay? All right, so we are going to tackle this question. Okay, the first A, 2A. So the A is the address of the sender, for example. Okay, this is... Uh, then we have to tell the people. So you are writing to your uh, co-curricular assistant. Uh, so you need to... Uh, don't write your home address because this is about school matters. So they need to write their class, okay, instead of their home address. Then the second A is the address of the receiver, okay, who is the core curricular senior assistant. So the formula, remember, 2A, 2D, 
So the the next D is the the day. Okay, which is twentieth May twenty twenty. For example, today's date. Then the next D is the dear madam. So remind our people that if you are sure that the person in charge is a lady, then straight away write dear madam. They don't have to write dear sir stroke madam. Okay, then add. Okay, ada two A two D. Then tip. Okay, tip T I P. The the T is the title. Okay, for example. Permission to use sport facilities. Okay, then the I is the introduction of oneself. Okay, for example, as a monitor of six utari, because the question mentioned that you are the class monitor, so I I address myself as the monitor of six utari. I Nazri bin Khalid. Would like to seek your permission to use the sport facilities. Then the P, which is purpose. Okay, T I P. P is the purpose. For example, the purpose is to practice for the inter-class games. So now I have completed my first paragraph. Okay, from the beginning until the First paragraph. I've been using the two A two D tip. Okay, two A two D tip. Okay, now my second paragraph. During. Okay, during. So the letter D stands for details. Okay, what are the details need to put into consideration? Okay, for example, regarding the practice. We are planning to have our practice every Monday and Thursday from 4 to 5 p.m. So as I said, of course, the co curricular senior assistant need to know when uh, the peoples are going to use the facilities. Okay, what time? Okay, what day? Then the next details for your information. We will use the netball and volleyball court because it is given in the question just now about the the name of the game. So I chose here netball and volleyball court. Okay. Then besides, we will also be using the balls and nets. So I think the information is quite clear about uh, the time. Okay. Then what um. Uh, what are the things that we need for the practice? Okay, then I have, I'm going to proceed to my last paragraph, which is my third paragraph. Hari Raya. Okay, during Hari Raya. So the H stands for hope. So I really hope that you will consider our request. Okay, then this letter T stand for thank you for your kind attention okay we have to remind our peoples don't use the uh, closure like you used to have in your informal uh, informal letter because uh i have experience okay they 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 wrote in the answer a okay, goodbye till me again okay they they are going to apply the same closure that they used uh, to do in their informal Letter, so it's very crucial for us to remind them that the closure is not the same with the informal letter. Then year is the yours faithfully. Then signature or short name Nazri. Then my full name and also the position. Right. So I have completed the letter using the two A. To the tip during Hari Raya this year. Okay, to A to the tip during Hari Raya this year. Alright. So actually, we can simplify our letter using this formula. Then, uh, I think with this formula, people will uh, will have we will uh, will will not find any problem of writing the formal letter because it looks uh it may look complicated too the kids okay
All right. So our last format today is the book review. Okay, the book review is also one of the format need to be taught in year six. Okay, book review. Okay, let's look at the format. Okay, so we, so the basic format of the book review. Okay, um, actually we don't have the specific format for book review, but this is what I have taken from the ESL learning uh, learning uh, page. Okay, ESL learning page. So I have simplified the information into a formula of tag your group number. Okay, simple. Remember, tag your group number to memorize how to write a book review. So what does TAP, T-A-P stands for? So the T is the title, okay? Of course, they need to mention the title of the book. Then the A stands for the author, okay, the author, okay? The writer of the book. Then the P is the publisher, okay? Then your, the word your, actually the letter T, uh, sorry, the letter Y, stands for year of publication okay, year of publication then the group okay the word group g stands for genre okay, what is the genre of the book okay we have taught our peoples right about the genre in our first topic in the year six textbook okay then the number okay the letter n stands for uh, sorry the number itself stands for number of pages simple that your group number i think is is quite easy to remember okay so let's look at the question okay the question i actually i have forgotten where did i put uh, where, where did i take the question uh, i forgot where is the source that i that i took the question but never mind just for our sharing session today. So this is actually the question. Okay, so this is the question. So it is a, an information about three books, okay, which is the first one is the Tunku Abdul Rahman, The Life of Tunku Abdul Rahman. Then we have the Ton Hussein On, Father of Unity. The last one is the Wit and Wisdom of Dr. Mahade Muhammad. Okay, so this is the, the information given in the question. Okay, uh, then the question mentioned here, based on the information above, write a book review. So simple question, uh, instruction. Okay, so the title, The Wit and Wisdom of Dr. Mahade Muhammad. Then mention here the author, Dr. Stephen Raj. The publisher is the Coronet Books Incorporation. Then we have synopsis of uh, fourth prime minister born in 1925 in Alustar. He was a doctor and ascended quickly from member of parliament to, to prime minister. Okay, he grew the economy and was an activist for developing nations. Okay, so I'm going to show you how we're going to answer this question based on the tag your group number. Okay, the formula. Okay, so the first T is, a, is the title, okay? So I will choose the wit and wisdom of Dr. Mahadi Muhammad, okay, because I love reading autobiography and he is my idol. So actually in this uh, red color, so the, this is what I meant by supporting details, so I have included also the genre of the of the book, okay, and the reason why I chose this book, okay. And I love the book as the author, Dr. Stephen Roch is a famous writer. So now I am including the author, okay, the tab title, author, okay, uh, tab. Tap your group number. Remember the formula? Okay. Then, as I am a bookworm, I have read so many of his writings. 
So this is again a supporting details which is not included in the question but I add on my own. Okay. The book is published by the Coronet Books Incorporation. I would like to know more about his life as a doctor and his achievements in developing nations. Okay, so I have inclu uh, included the uh, the the simple description of the book. Okay, about the synopsis. Okay, then and with overall, it is a good book. Okay, by the way, uh, when we are teaching the book review. We have to remind our kids what, what is the purpose of them writing a book review. So we have to introduce to them that book review is a reference okay, for the readers to choose what books that they're going to, to read. So that is the main purpose of giving a book review. All right? uh, like, uh, like myself, uh, the way I introduce the book review in my class is our... Uh, I made an introduction. I said, okay, well, you, uh, I think you have experience of buying products from online. Then you will look for the review. Okay. So the review there is what you are going to, is the comment from other buyers that is going to uh, influence your judgment towards a, towards a product. So same goes with the book review. So book review also a comments from other readers so that other readers will uh, will have the, the judgment on the book that they will choose. Okay. So uh, according to the formula just now, tap your group number. If you notice, uh, your Y stands for year of publication. So since in this question, it doesn't mention any, um, any uh, year of publication. So I don't include it in my answer. Okay, and also um, your, uh, tap your group number. So a genre already mentioned is it is an autobiography. It's just that we don't have uh, to put the year of publication because it is not given in the question. So that's how I teach my peoples how to write the book review. Okay, basically they are they are only uh, there is only one. Uh, paragraph then we just add another one sentence about overall what we think about the, the book overall it is a good book that's that's all it's quite simple actually okay all right so any questions so far for the formatted writing before I go out to the writing stories is it clear to you okay Kain. yeah there was another question. Mm -hmm. uh, is the publisher related to the choice of book? Is it going to affect the information? Well, definitely, because uh, normally, okay, for example, we teachers, right? When we want to buy reference book, okay? Definitely, if you look at, oh, Pelangi. Pelangi is a popular uh, publisher, right? Uh, so we will, uh, our judgment towards the book is, uh, I think, is much better compared to the, unpopular publisher am i right i think yeah. it plays, yeah. it plays uh, an important role in in choosing a book okay publisher yeah, yeah a well. well known publisher house would make yes it definitely yes and there was another question yeah in book review is paragraphing required yeah uh, like like i said just now it's only require one paragraph plus uh, one um uh, like closure, a simple closure like that. Uh, overall, it is a good book or whatever. That's all. Because uh, when I check on the uh, English uh, ESL uh, website, it mentioned like that. We don't have to put a uh, few paragraphs. Okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, Naraini? Yeah? Okay, since you say that the publisher is considered as one of the main point, uh, yeah. why don't you add in the supporting details for the publisher, for example, because uh, you said just now, like, uh, you mm -hmm. choose uh, the wit and wisdom of Dr. Mahathir Muhammad because I love reading autobiography and he is my idol, right? Mm -hmm. So, dia punya supporting details, kan? Yeah, that's true. 
Okay, so untuk publisher uh, Sebab tadi you kata apa nama ni Point tu penting juga, betul tak? Ya yeah. Bila kita pilih okay. buku, kita based on publisher kan? Ya, yeah, so, but, but uh, kita tak add in uh, supporting details for publisher? Okay, good question uh, Puan Shanas. Uh, can you please bear in mind that we are restricted to 80 number of words. Okay. So that's why I that's why I keep telling my people that mm-hmm. uh, you need only three information plus two supporting details. So that's why I've already inserted two supporting details. I love reading autobiography, my idol, and I also have included I am a bookworm, I have read so many of his writing so I don't think that I need to add another supporting details otherwise it will be go uh, it will go beyond the limit number of words that's it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much for the info. Okay. But there's, but there's no harm if you want to include uh, supporting details based on the publisher. It's just that maybe uh, you put uh, why you are choosing the book and uh, the supporting details for the publisher. You don't have to write, I am a bookworm, I have so ma- uh, read so many uh, of his uh, writing. No? So, uh, tak apa. So, as a teacher, what we can do is, mungkin kita mm-hmm. boleh perkenalkan ayat tu kat budak-budak. So, mm-hmm. masa bila budak tulis, so dia boleh pilih mana mm-hmm. satu, apa nama ni, supporting That's details yang dia nak masukkan. Yes. Okay. Uh, normally, normally Puan Shanas, when I teach in my classroom, uh, hmm. Okay, I I will give example. Okay, so so this detail. Okay, what are the supporting details? Supporting that details. Put? Yeah, for every for every information given in the question, we will mm-hmm. brainstorm. We will bring or do brainstorming in the class. What are the relevant supporting details that we can use to support that particular information about mm-hmm. the price, about the publisher, about the title, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's up to them to choose what uh, what are the supporting details that they are going to put into their answer. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. thank you, thank you. Uh, most welcome. Alright, so let's go to our next session which is the sharing, uh, sharing about the story writing. Okay, so I would like to uh, highlight about what makes our essay interesting actually. Because based on my experience, uh, some people, uh, they can write well, but they are just lack of linkers. Because I think they don't, uh, they don't really see what is the importance of the linkers. Okay, so that's why for the for the people who has who have achieved actually the minimum requirement of the writing, then I will introduce the. Linkers. Of course, in the beginning, you will teach them according to the SBO, subject, verb, object. That is the very basic one. But right after they have acquired that skill, we have to introduce them what, what are the function of linkers in their story. Because uh, I can see that some people, based on my observation, okay, they can write, but, but because without the linkers, it makes the story less interesting. Okay, so this is one of my uh, idea that I've that I've been using in my classroom to introduce the linkers. Okay, so first introduce to the people what are the linkers and their effects on stories. Okay, so for the for the first step, we teachers have to introduce to our people what are the function of linkers. What are the example of linkers and what are their effects on our stories? Okay, then the next step: give the people a story, but without linkers. Uh, that's what I'm doing in my class. Okay, I will uh, give the people a story, but I keluarkan uh, all the linkers. Uh, then they will have to think of what are the suitable linkers in the story. Okay, ask them to complete the story with suitable linkers. Okay, in the beginning, okay, maybe for the first time you want to introduce the linkers, maybe you can use, uh, you, you can provide the linkers in the form of bubbles so that they can choose what are the suitable linkers that they're going to use for every blanks. Because uh, don't expect them to know everything in the first class. Okay, in the first class, we will guide them using the bubbles, meaning guided. 
guided answers. Okay. Then the second step, then on the you can straight away put blanks to all the linkers, then let them fill in based on the their experience. Can you see or not? No, not yet. It doesn't appear. Okay, yeah, okay. That no. is. Okay. That there? All right. So this is yeah. a sample of worksheet that I'm using in my classroom. Okay. So actually, uh, um, for this activity, I can say that I am uh, hitting two birds with one stone. Okay, the first thing, of course, teaching linkers. That's my main purpose. The second, uh, the second purpose is, uh, I bet you all also agree with me. Uh, nowadays, our kids are hardly read books, right? They are, they hardly read storybooks. Okay, so without this kind of uh, reading uh, activities, so there will be lack of ideas in writing. Okay, they will have lack of ideas in writing so by providing this kind of activity so indirectly actually our kids are exposed to writing story what the story what a story looks like so actually so by by doing this activity i'm helping them to use linkers in the story and at the same time they will think oh this is how to write this story based on the picture so they will they will have some kind of idea of how to, to write a story. Okay, so this is the example of a uh, worksheet. Okay, okay. John and his friend were cycling home after school. Whatever John heard a faint sound. Then uh, blank. He saw a kitten and a drain. It was hurt. Blank. He gently picked it and brought it home. Okay. Then after right after they have done this, okay, after this we distribute this worksheet to them. They complete it and we are going to, of course, discuss the answer with them. Okay. So, factoredly, after searching high and low, without delay, okay, then upon reaching home in the evening. So, those are the, the linkers that we use in the story. Okay. So, of course, there are more linkers out there. So, it's up to your creativity how you are going to, to create the worksheet, okay, for your pupils to, in order to teach them how to use linkers, okay. So I do believe that linkers play an important role um, to the uh, feelings when we write, when we read a story, okay. All right, so the next uh, method that I've been using in my class, I call it as the pre-pass method. Okay, what does pre-pass method mean? Okay, actually, uh, this pre-pass method, the pre-pass comes from uh, the words present, past tense. So actually, it is an activity which changes the story from present tense into past tense. Because I do believe that who doesn't really speak English at home, you know, they don't. They are not aware if the story is in the form of present tense or in the form of past tense. They they will think that the total story will change, everything will change, but actually it's not. Okay, only the verb part will change, not everything. So that's why that is the purpose why I'm using this method. Okay, in order to make them realize that. When I change a story from present into a past tense, not everything will change. Only for the certain part of the sentences, especially for the for the verb, of course. Okay. Then, uh, like I said, this is also uh, to stick two birds with one stone. They are lack of reading, so result in result they have no idea to write stories. So. In order to force them to write story, uh, to read stories, so by this, by doing this activity, actually, okay, then people will know which part of the sentences change when in the present tense and also the past tense form. Okay, so let's look at the example of the 
of the worksheet okay based on this story about the house on fire okay you see the example uh, i've given them a story so that they uh, at least they will have the rough idea of how to write a story about house on fire okay so i put here today aiman is walking home from school suddenly he sees his neighbor's house is on fire he runs to the nearest telephone booth and calls the fire station okay a few minutes later the firemen arrive they immediately pull out the hose one of them has to climb who are screaming for help then they are sent to the hospital to be treated the house has burned into ashes and nothing is left however they are thankful that everyone is safe so if you notice that all the verbs are in the form of present tense so uh, actually there are two ways that you can do it you can either uh, give this story in the form of worksheet like this or you can just read the story to them you say okay i'm going to read this story i want you to write in your book so actually uh if 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 we read the story actually um indirectly we are also teaching them how to spell okay so we can uh, you can do either uh, in the form of worksheet like this or in the form of uh, listening so actually we are doing listening and writing okay okay so right after they have done their activity it can be in the uh, individual work or uh, pairing or group work depends on the students level okay normally in my first class i will make it in the individual work okay but uh for the weaker one i will do pairing or group work in the in the form of four to five people in a group okay so i will show the answer to them okay for example last saturday aiman was uh, so i highlighted the the verb uh, which has changed from the uh, present tense to past tense in the red color so it's easier for the kids to see oh the is changed to was okay then walking home from school suddenly he saw so just now the worksheet was he sees so he sees change into he saw his neighbor's house was uh, on fire is on fire changed to is on fire then he runs changed to he ran to the nearest telephone booth and calls changed to called the fire station and if you notice that uh, i do highlighted the uh, the linkers in the form of bold okay on the screen okay uh, for example a few minutes later immediately then so those are linkers so actually i purposely uh, bold those words those linkers to again remind them okay if you look at those uh, words in the bowl what are they uh, why am i uh, doing it like that so they will uh, just give me if they still remember the the lesson on the linkers they will reply oh teachers those are linkers okay then a few minutes later the firemen arrived so all the present tense change into past tense and they are written in the red color Okay, pool changed to pulled. One of them has changed to had. Then uh, to save the victims who are screaming, changed to who were screaming. Then are sent, changed to were sent. Okay, then the last one, the house has burnt, changed to had burnt. Okay, then nothing is left, changed to nothing was left. Then they are thankful, changed to they were thankful, and everyone is safe, changed into everyone was safe. Okay? So, all right. I think I have finished all my sharing.
Okay, so before I uh, finish my my sharing, just to inform you, okay, actually most of the format are included in my channel. Okay, so please visit my YouTube channel, Jom English. Okay, Jom English, so you can get more information on that. So I will keep updating by time to time, okay, for all the formats and all the tips that I have I've been using in my classroom, inshallah. Okay, I will do my very best to do the sharing in that channel. Okay, so that I pass the mic to Miss Frida. Okay, thank you very much, Puan Noraini, for your really valuable sharing today. I believe everyone we have uh, gained a lot of information. I know I did, and um, a big thanks to our own Jam Gomba Jam. Panoraini for sharing with us and um, it is hoped that it has been a beneficial uh, session for everyone, for all teachers in Gomba and uh, as well as outside of Gomba if you are joining us today and uh, do give us feedback if you have anything you would like to you know, uh, help us improve on so give us feedback in the chat box yeah? okay, okay. and uh, a teacher requested